Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Muse, episode five. The Muse is a space for inspiration, drawing insights from individuals across the diverse fields. Its mission is to cultivate awareness and illuminate unconventional avenues of healing and growth. The Muse strives to elevate ancient traditions, ultimately enhancing and enriching our lives in this new world. The intention of the Muse is to touch the heart and inspire the mind to imagine and create new ways of thinking, living, and being. My name is Maya Abushdid. I am a shamanic practitioner, a preparation integration guide, and an energy and body work facilitator. And I welcome again my dear friend, astrologer and coach, Joel Rabah. Welcome back, Joel. Hello, Maya. Hello, hello. Um, <laughs> It's, again, it's the first episode of this year, 2024. Congratulations. <laughs> we made it. Um, and <coughs> this is our new re first recording for this year after the last four episodes that we recorded through November and December. And we've been preparing for this month to speak specifically about um the first new moon of 2024 uh, and see the connection with the previous uh cycles as well because this is also what the muse started with the astrology the passion with astrology in combination with shamanic perspective um on when it comes to cycles when it comes to cycles of change and cycles of growth and cycles of death and cycles of rebirth as well and this new moon is in capricorn um so i'd like you to start with speaking to us about what is this new moon about especially especially in capricorn and what is it telling us what is the reading of this new moon well, first of all, it's the new, it's the first new moon of the year. So practically there's a feeling that now it's a new year, right? And the, the configuration of this new moon in Capricorn is really interesting. First of all, thank God it's a new moon. It's a real new moon where we can put intention, where we can manifest. First of all, it's in Capricorn. It's an earth sign. Capricorn is a Saturnian sign. It's ruled by Saturn, but at the same time, its its aim is to preserve and to create foundation for durability. So this new moon has a great, great configuration. First of all, it's it's at twenty degrees Capricorn, and it's really in a very helpful aspect to Uranus at nineteen degrees Taurus. And Uranus is the planet of, you know, yes, upheaval and chaos and freedom and liberation. But because it's a helpful aspect, this new moon carries with it some personal breakthroughs because it's in Earth signs and Earth, Earth signs are, are more towards practicality and daily life mm -hmm. and how we can make things, you know, durable and, and, and sustainable. And so we have this kind of an interesting supportive aspect with from Uranus. And by sign, we have the ruler of the lunation, which is Saturn and Pisces in a next in a nice sextile to to this new moon, which is which is like a gift. Saturn is about responsibility, is about time and space and organization and how, you know, putting foundation for things so it's kind of telling us that if you can envision it it can happen if you put the intention for it and allow the manifestational arc to happen because of course we can manifest in like 24 hours or we can manifest for the next two years so it would be interesting to have a vision, like to use the insights, because I feel like we're going to have some insights on this new moon. Mm -hmm. um, because there is a support as well from Jupiter, which is our, you know, benefit, like the big benefit planets. 
And the next day, directly after on the, uh, we're talking, <laughs> we're talking about the new moon on the Jan, on Jan 11. Here in, in, in Beirut, it will be 1.57 p.m. Uh, it will be 12.57 Paris, Amsterdam, and 11.57 uh, a.m. Lisbon. And the next day, so actually this new moon is building up for the next day for a very nice aspect. On the 12th. On the 12th, yes. So... What's the interesting aspect? We have been starting this podcast with Mars <laughs> and the upheaval of Mars. And Mars has been for so long invisible in the sky. You couldn't see uh, Mars in the sky since last September. And we know what happened here in the region on the eclipse in, in October. So what's, what's interesting is that Mars for the first time is visible and after the new moon is making a very supportive aspect to Jupiter, the planet of, you know, benefics. So somehow mm -hmm. there is a gift from the skies. Somehow we will have the confidence. If we have hope, we'll, we, ha we will have like the strategy to create a path for this hope, to make it more practical. So basically, this is the this is like the, the energy I'm feeling. I want you to talk about the, <laughs> the quality of the energy because we talked about it. And yeah, and we'll take it from there for the embodiment of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's so much to cover in the time that we are recording. And uh, I just want to mention here again, um, just take your time as you're listening to us and also see what resonates with you, filter the information that works for you. What, what is the whole concept of the new moon and the whole concept of the full moon? The, the main things around them is how can we align with the energies at play so that we have allies instead of opposing ourself, resisting the change, and so on and so forth. Sometimes resistance is part of the flow. Other times it's actually we're kind of fighting things because we are struggling with structures and belief systems internally. I mean, <laughs> as, as this new moon for me has been has been an extension of December. Somehow I feel that it is bringing in. Now it's like the new year. It's it's somehow, it's not really, it wasn't December 31st. Anyway, when it comes to dates, most of the dates that we know have been just applied, Many. have been applied on us. So for example, you know, the whole thing around Christmas is not really defined around the time of Christmas, but rather it was about the winter solstice and the return of the light. And so at starting 2024 in a, in a calendar year is not the start of the year at all, but the moon gives us signs. And also there is the astrological year that we will be talking more about around the end yeah. of this episode, which, uh, in which, in that arc, the beginning of the astrological new year, we would be offering a, a journey, a guided journey that combines astrology and shamanism from the spring equinox of 2024 to the spring equinox of 2025. We'll talk more about it around the end of this episode. But the when we were preparing for this episode, this is when we align. Where this is where we we kind of yeah. explore play and see okay this is what I'm going through this is what you're going through and also what is in line with um the readings the, the, the weather as you call it Joel the weather the weather forecast and yeah the astro weather and, yeah so so this, to to me what you just said resonates because I feel that somehow it's like we have been yes destructuring things. Yes, there has been an internal collapse uh, through the last, since 2020, really. 
and and there has been ongoing cycles of health issues and mental issues and all kinds of questioning the world of spirituality uh, yes. and the world of teachers and the world of gurus and everything is being questioned the world of beliefs and religions and all of that and so I, I feel that we're starting this year with a sense a, a kind of stream of light towards as you said mm. the foundation there are already some pillars that can be clear mm. uh, and the through and with those pillars what remains to build will happen over time somehow this is how I feel but the main ones that remained after a lot of cleansing and clearing and just destructuring and disentanglement mm. and disillusionment and all everything yeah. around those themes <laughs> What remains uh, are the pieces that belong. And, and so I feel that, you know, in line with what you said, there is an, there, there is an, in, there's a kind of force internally, which is represented by Mars, as you, as you described it, of yeah, something Mars and happening. Capricorn is happier. Yeah. 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 And, and so there's, it's like it, there is enough of the internal fighting and there's more an alignment towards using that energy to act, to act from a place of, again, we tap into authenticity, what is true for you, what is true for me, and how can we meet in this action with the least stress, with the least force. Yeah. Um well, Mars Mars has has um, ingressed into Capricorn, which is a very very good place for Mars. Uh, other than Aries and Scorpio, which are his domiciles, it's it's a place of exaltation because mm -hmm. this Saturnian um, sign for Mars gives it more um, focus, strategic. Uh, duty mm -hmm. and 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 checklist oriented mm -hmm. and and more um it has more it's good because it has mars has more like long uh, like long-term goals to accomplish and it has the long you know the the the, the breath to to, to take mm -hmm. it into action now what you just mentioned um there's so much happening, right? Like we're trying as much as possible to simplify it and to put it in a, like in a, in a format. But the the energy that you're describing, uh, first of all, because it's you know Saturn has so much to do lately. Um, what's what's gonna be like ushering us into the into the full moon is gonna be this Pluto situation like mm -hmm. pluto pluto has been in capricorn since 2008 so that new moon in capricorn probably is the last one where pluto will be in capricorn um i'm, I'm not sure about it but at least the effect of it is like the ending of a cycle we're ending a cycle since 2008 and starting a cycle of Pluto in Aquarius, it's another Saturnian sign, but it's a different kind of Saturnian sign. First of all, when you talk about connection and ideas and ideologies, and this is Aquarius, this is the Saturnian sign of, um, like, yes, it's a Saturnian sign, but it's an air sign. So there is so much on the 22nd, actually, on the, no, on the 21st here, early morning, we have... January um, 21st. Yeah, yeah Jan January 21st, uh, Pluto will be at zero Aquarius. Mm -hmm. And I want to just remind everyone, and you and me as well, that at uh, zero Aquarius was where the um, conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn into, at the end of 2020, it happened at zero Aquarius. And it's it's a it's a very important mark 2024 feels like we are marking the change 2023 we felt the change coming we felt the upheaval but the the, the marking is happening now we feel like we have so much like 
markers. And Saturn is the master of time. It's Kronos um, in the Greek um, mythology. So we're, we're marking time, but differently. We There is so much at play. The good thing is that uh, Pluto is in the equation of the new moon. It's not it's at nine degrees difference. So it's not very present. It's present, but not very present. It will be present on the full moon. We'll take, we'll talk about it more on the full moon. But mm. there, yes, there is so much that feels like we are new yearing. <laughs> and at the same time, there is this uh, image that we talked about, about mm. the Capricorn goatfish. The symbol of Capricorn is this goat uh, that has um, like the legs of a goat and then has a fish tail because Capricorn, yes, is an earth sign, but it's a feminine sign as well. So it's very important to understand that we're still dabbling in femininity, in like deep feminine energies that are the creatrix. Um, and there is a possibility to create from um, from this intention for the long term, um, it, it's I, I feel it's beautiful. I feel we can really use it. Of course, we have this you know this um, Mercury situation while we're recording right now, and it will be resolved on the new moon. You know, Mercury for the third time has met with Neptune, and. This this combobulation, this this feeling of you know being not very focused, we're gonna be done with it between the new moon and the full moon. So we have Mercury ingressing into Capricorn. So we'll be organized and focused. As of 14th of Jan, early morning, you know, we can be feeling like, okay, <laughs> we have like a plan and we have the confidence and the, the willingness to go about this plan. Mm -hmm. So between mm -hmm. the 11th and the 14th, we have these three days of what you say, usually of manifesting, you know, take the two, three days between the new moon, the beginning of the new moon, and just to accelerate the energy, yeah. make it happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's beautiful. I mean, when I listen to you, it's, it's like, when you talk about aspects meeting each other it's it's really the symbolism of of energies meeting each other and those energies have a certain signature that's what what if i can you know with the with the basics uh, related to the passion that i have for astrology when you speak about those energies it, it makes sense it does not define things it's again about honing it's like seeing what what is what tools can be honed can be cultivated especially in lunar cycles because they're they're the shortest other other than the day and the nighttime in terms of cycles but they're they're the short the moon yeah. is the fastest moving right in terms of yeah. on, on a monthly basis and the moon was the definer of time in terms of you know how a cycle goes in a monthly in terms of you know planting a new crop and then harvesting it in the next six months same concept when it comes to the moon cycle it's it's really about like thank this you for moon. saying this yeah, yeah yeah thank you for saying this the the marking of time actually because when we speak about you know we have so much to cover in in a, in a video and you know, when we speak about the moon, the moon, if we just understand, like the moon takes 28 days to 29 days to go through the whole zodiac, like the 12 zodiac signs, it makes them in 29 days. The sun takes 365 days. Pluto spends from 15 to 20, 25, 27 years in one sign. So it takes like almost... 250 years to go through the zodiac so the longer the slower a planet uh, takes to change signs the more significant is the change of signs and that's why we're talking about mm, it mm. um it's been like when we talk about pluto yeah okay it's changed signs. it's been since 2008 in the collective 
we're going through Pluto and Capricorn, which is about resources, about earth, materialistic things, uh, institution, financial institutions. 2008, we remember there was a financial uh, crash in, in uh, like in, in um, the US in, in the US and uh, and here in the Middle East, we had like a super financial crash at the end of Pluto in Capricorn. And now we're going towards another kind of Pluto that is Saturnian. It's still about, you know, power and the power, you know, where does the power come from? Like this, this kind of energy that comes from the underworld that mm. sometimes is taboo and sometimes it's about secrets and sometimes about manipulation. But if we are looking at an authentic life and, and looking into our own authenticity, this, this energy is coming to liberate us from the, the wounds that we were not aware of and to take our power back. So when mm. we are talking about this movement, of course, it's going to be another 20 years. We're not going to feel it all now, but we're kind of feeling like the marking this kind of step into a new cycle. And it mm. will be in Aquarius mm. for 20 years and we'll have other times to talk about it. Mm. Mm. But and it's kind of in the in the mix, in the mix. Mm. Mm. And that, yeah, and that's the beauty about shorter cycles and longer cycles sometimes yes. i feel that you know as we go through the moon that this the moon cycle uh, be it between the new moon and the full moon in terms of recording our episodes and also the days before where we are preparing to record uh, there there's the tapping into the energy at play in order to get through the month and then the next month and then the next month we can't look at the white picture but while denying the small details and we yes. can't get stuck in the small details without being also looking at a wider picture. It's the same. It's the same concept as everything in life. It's the same concept as ceremony. It's the same concept of, uh, around integration. Change is daily. It's not like when we look at arcs of change, we we speak about the history of humanity and we look at the cycles yes. being repeated. And yes, and is there any change? And we look when when we try to look at it as did humanity learn to live together with all the changes that humanity has been through, there is a repetition of things that have been signatures in the human history in terms of war and empires yes. rising and falling. Yes. Yet it's really the small aspects, the small things that touch us that makes us really feel life at a deeper level and it's it's really about being touched and that's what the muse is about the muse is really about touching on the muse in you uh, yeah. it's really it, it's really reigniting remembering through insights that we share uh astrologically to be inspired to move forward right to be inspired to move forward it's yes. important yeah um so so yeah, I mean, uh, just to mention something here, Joel, because in the preparation, we, we, we checked on, you know, what does Capricorn rule? And, yeah. and yeah. It, it rules which parts of the body? It rules the knees, um, but as well, because it's a Saturnian sign, mm -hmm. um, it it rules part of the parts of the leg and the the calves and the knees, uh, but the thing is Saturn rules the skeleton of the human body and the teeth. So Capricorn is as well uh, involved in these parts of our body. So um, that's a way that the manifestation of the energy can be in the body. Um, the thing about Capricorn, Capricorn. The, the difference between Capricorn and Aquarius, because we're talking about these two Saturnian signs, one of them is more into the preservation of, and it, it feels like it's more nostalgic Capricorn. It looks at the past, it, it's more like it wants to preserve things for durability. And, and 
Aquarius is more like the future. How can we structure for the future? So it's more ideology. It's more like how are we as as people living together? And we've been tackling a lot about the, like the, the collective has been of you know rebellion. Um, I don't know if you're uh, yeah the connection was a bit unstable yeah uh, so yeah so, so so this is the difference that we're talking about we're still like we're still under Saturn and it would be interesting to watch the cycle once Saturn moves to another sign and then Pisces we still have Saturn in Pisces until 2026 but end of 2025 so yeah but we're good we're good we're we're on a you know new role <laughs> all right we we got uh, a little mishap when it comes to um uh, technical, snafu. technical stuff so yeah i i and i just relate also very much joel to to how uh, you know signs affect the body uh, and how can we read it within our body and this is also very much um, relatable because when we go through aches and pains when there's joint pains especially in this time it is very much related to to that aspect it's like something an injury or some kind of pain is being remembered and it is it is expressed through the body and that's that's the beauty of of you know the whole aspects the the signs and also the effects of the planets and how can we relate and there's always you know when we discuss things together and you sit and you read the chart and you're 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 always checking my chart when it comes to okay what is going on with maya at the moment and you check your chart uh, it's always. beautiful it, uh, always it's and it's like okay so this is very normal because it's like oh Maya's going through some kind of you know chaos yeah. at the moment or I am going yeah. through some kind of you know just discombobulation uh, and so we we navigate that it's part it's part of the it's part of preparing for such episodes and also it takes yes. it takes it plays a role in you know some technicalities um uh, uh, when we when we, ta when we tap in and and align to start a conversation, and so I just wanna you know just uh, give like you know give attention to everything everything that is happening or or highlight everything that is happening is part of the play of life and yes it's it's really when we sit with things we go back to intention. And even with the intention, we go back to how rigid I'm I'm being with the intention, how aligned I am with my intention, and what parts of me are still not aligned with it. Or what this is this intention really mine, or is it something that others are asking for and therefore I need to ask for? Everybody has their own signature. And that's the beauty of being human. And also living as a part of the collective. And I love yes. what you shared, Joel, about the power moving from the, you know, the the personal to the collective. And it's more yeah. a horizontal movement. And if there's anything also, you know, there's there are repetitions when it comes to our sharings, but there is the feminine at play. And the feminine is the horizontal, the masculine is the vertical, and they both work together. They're axes that com connect together. But at the same time, one it has been emphasized or highlighted or empowered over 2000 years plus, and the other was secluded, um, suppressed, um, shut down. And it's going to play out. Nature has its own wisdom, regardless of everything going on. And I, yeah. that's, that's what I trust. That's what I trust. That's the interest, that's the interest in, in us wanting to share with people some astral literacy. And that's part of the program we are, you know, implementing in, in the equinox. It's all about, you know, 
how to use astral literacy in order for us to navigate better uh, mm -hmm. collective moments and personal moments because we don't live in a bubble mm -hmm. we live in a in a in a collective mm -hmm. wherever we are on the planets the energy currents are not the same they manifest a bit differently of course but the quality of the energy there is something that we can recognize and when we talk about planets we talk about principles and these principles if we um, the more we understand them the more we talk about it we have astral literacy which helps us to understand and to widen the mm -hmm. horizons mm -hmm. more and then use it in the practice pra like the practice of shamanism is like so old that it's it's an embodiment of how to live a life with spirit like uh, like what is a spiritual life if it's not embodied if you don't follow like like earth and seasons and so i wanted to just usher us into you know uh talking about this part before we finish um yes the, the episode yes well um so we're preparing for this guided journey uh we're still weaving it um the first thing that i would like to say is i'm, I'm going to be mentioning more about it in the newsletter as as i release the newsletter for the new moon um and we are going to have uh, another uh, also more uh, let's say developing on that project on the full moon as well uh, but from now what we, what we can say is um, yeah yes now what we can say is we're opening the space in February for two Q&A sessions to talk more about this guided journey um, so I'll be adding some links in the newsletter for you to register to those Q&A sessions to know more about this guided journey. We're talking about a guided journey for one year, astrological year from the spring equinox 2024 to the spring equinox 2025. Uh, so we're starting on March 19th, uh, our first our first uh, guided journey, shamanic journey, actually, it will be a shamanic journey. And then it's going to be ongoing inputs, insights, astrologically on a monthly level. Um, and also other yeah. other guidance that Joel will be uh, will be offering in this journey as we go through the year from the equinox to the summer solstice to the fall equinox to the winter solstice and then ending at the spring equinox so mm. there will be four to five shamanic journeys along the way to hold the space in a medicine in a medicine way and also monthly insights that's what we can say for now if you want to register uh to this to this q a i'll be adding some links in the newsletter joel you want to add something I just want to add that, you know, um, anything that uh, help us honestly navigate these trans transitional times is welcome. So if you are resonating with what we're saying, if you feel like curious about it, just check us out, uh, you know, share it with your friends. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's nice to help spreading the word. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, you're much better than me in, in doing this part. This is where the pr pr the producer and Joel comes up and I'm like, the ex -producer, yeah. thank God for that uh, and the goddess. Um, uh, so please check the newsletter, take some time to read, you know, about what we are going to be doing and also take part in, in this guided journey uh for the next year it's going to be online but you know it's going to be live sessions which which is quite interesting for both of us as well and we we yeah. are setting a certain exchange that would be also feasible to support uh this journey for us and for yourself so this is when it comes to the guided journey for one year um another thing i would like to share with you all is um uh, I am being asked, I have been asked to be part of a guest speaker on an integration, a six weeks integration course um, that is guided by two amazing women. Uh, one of them is a somehow a friend that that joined <laughs> my world um, lately uh, in my journey in Portugal, and she's an integration specialist. 
And this is what I've been also focusing on in my medicine work with people. And her name is Amanda Argo Ethimu. And um, she's she's she really focuses on embodiment. She really focuses on integration being an essential part of uh, post ceremony. Uh, and also, she's working with a, a psychologist. Uh, her name is Sasha Vrind, and both of them they're they're co teaching a six weeks integration course that is starting on January twenty fourth, and Amanda mm. was so gracious wow interesting to also offer uh, this community uh that is that is receiving those those the videos and the, the the episodes of the muse and the, through the newsletter and also through your contact contacts joel a 10 percent discount coupon uh code uh for their course it's a six weeks course that is well guided and their focus is really about bringing wow. bringing together the changes on a daily basis because integration is really the theme when it comes to um, transformation and and be it related to uh, plant medicine induced altered altered or expanded states of consciousness or non plant med plant medicine induced um, expanded states of consciousness and this is this is really I'm really passionate about that and this is also why I'm joining a one-year course um, uh, that that has been quite a great opportunity um, with Psychedelics Today uh, and uh, starting also in January and also I'm being hosted uh, on their podcast today actually to be released on January 12th. Uh, so well, I'll be sending more links wow. when it comes to <laughs> when it comes so much to, happening so much happening I know I know and it's oh. such a if you again you know touching base on being grateful being grateful the work the work shows and this is where uh, this is where it's like mm, yes thank god thank god and uh, mm. uh, this is where um, I feel being touched and and on that note as as we are ending this episode I'd like to also remind everybody how important it is to uh, to keep listening to us especially in this part of the world but also what you feel like sharing with others is is what resonates with you we get comments on private messages uh, but we'd also like your comments on youtube on spotify on soundcloud yeah um, it helps with the algo it does. that's the thing it does and that's the game and yeah. until this game changes um i don't know well I mean, pluto this, this... and aquarius is all about algo so <laughs> we're upping the game here <laughs> i like i like how you're mentioning it algo it's like a little cuddling name for algorithm and and yeah, so because... yeah that's that's the game and and so you know it's it's not only about having a big list of followers and subscribers but it's also about uh sharing our work and and helping you guide you uh, and also explore together uh, those changes be it in ceremonial setting and also in combination with astrology astrology works in 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 harmony with with shamanism and i find it to be probably one of the closest uh, languages yes. Uh, languages that also shamanism talks about uh, in terms of archetypes and in, in terms of rooted traditions we're talking about thousands of years here uh every king and queen used to have an astrologers and an, an astrologer and a shaman at least so magician they used to call them but that's the magic and the magic is the medicine and the medicine is truth and here we are with you on the fifth episode thank you for listening uh joel thank you thank again you for your time thank you so uh, much such thank a you pleasure. for your energy <laughs> really and and the the work and you know all this journey of co-creation together it's beautiful and you know we hope you'll be riding with us yes so yeah indeed then, and you know stepping on your own carpet and then meeting uh, on our carpet yeah. and then stepping on your own carpet that's what guidance is about um so uh until may, then may you have a blessed new moon take care 
This is the Miss World uh, <laughs> salutation uh, from Joël Rabat, Royal. astrologer, coach, <laughs> producer, and etc. Uh, thank you for listening. Yep. Take care. Thank you. God bless. Bye-bye.